Part of the process of documenting the complex past and future management of Point Reyes National Seashore involves learning arguments from both sides of the issue. Polar opposites of that issue being represented on one side by the interests of wildlife enthusiasts, while on the other side we have the ranching community. One of those many conflicting arguments is that of the presence of coyote brush. Environmentalists say the brush is good, while the ranchers claim they are providing a service to the public by combating the brush, which, according to them, would overtake the park, making the land impassable and therefore unusable by humans. I'm in Point Reyes with ecologist Laura Cunningham to examine this specific topic. This is an old growth open prairie, and as you can see, you can walk through it. There's um, patches of coyote brush, but there's quite a lot of open coastal prairie too. And this is a completely unmanaged remnant that's just here. If the park would do some management to restore more of this native prairie, I think there'd be um, more activities, more trails that could be used. But if the park would also allow elk to come in here or do some prescribed burns, you could have even more open patches. So there's ways to have recreation without cows, especially because you could then remove the fences you could have more access to all of these pastures here, which are behind fences, and people wouldn't have to be dealing with mud and manure. I mean, look how beautiful this is. It's like, this is not a golf course or a mud bath. This is like walking in a, a fountain of bunch grasses with, you're not, your shoe doesn't even touch the ground. You're walking on biological soil crusts and um, bunch grasses, native forbs. So, trails through here would be beautiful. It would be a, a recreational paradise if we could restore more of this. Now granted, this isn't like walking on a sidewalk, but you're not out here because you want to walk on a sidewalk. This is still completely accessible. This is not even a difficult terrain to go through. The argument being presented by the pro ranching community is that without them bringing through their bulldozing trucks or the cattle, that the park would be overrun with these plants. My question to you is, would you rather hike through this biodiversity that has a myriad of animals around you, or would you like to hike through manure land, pasture, cattle grazing? Are you tempted to go hiking through this area? Uh, Absolutely uh, no. no. Are no. you aware that the ranchers are providing a service to you by keeping coyote brush at bay so that you can still hike through this area? It's a muddy <laughs> It's a <laughs> storm. It's a literal <laughs> storm. And you know, it doesn't need to be this way either. Imagine what this would look like if it was the way it's supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. Even Definitely. just driving up to here, I'm thinking like, your national park? Are you kidding me? It's hard to believe. Are you kidding this me? Is this is a national, a national park. park. Now behind me we have an example of an open space and this is maintained through cattle ranching. Even though technically, since this is federal land, it's all public access, whom of you feels comfortable hopping over a barbed wire fence and walking through cattle pasture? Even if for some reason you were tempted to walk through cattle pasture instead of beautiful, diverse native habitat. Let's think about a day's visit to the National Seashore from the perspective of a typical tourist. The day begins by entering the park, followed by proceeding to a desirable destination, such as the Lighthouse, Chimney Rock, Drake's Beach, Abbott's Lagoon, the Elk Reserve, etc. What each of these destinations has in common is a high level of natural habitat and native wildlife. Point being that before reaching those destinations, the tourist is driving past the thousands of acres of ranch land, not stopping at ranch land or for ranch land or on behalf of ranch land. I can think of two exceptions to this. When a plaque or historic structure is specifically placed to provide information to passing tourists and when tourists pull over to photograph and observe the elk that have expanded into ranching land. And in case you're wondering, yes, the very elk that the Park Service intends to shoot. Let me say that again. 
one of the only reasons visitors stop while passing through ranching territory of the park is to observe wildlife that the Park Service intends to kill strictly on behalf of the ranchers. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to see how rooted this coyote brush is, and it's pretty rooted in there. Wow. Can't pull that out. Here's a iris, native iris. That, again, deep roots. You could maybe rip the leaves off, but you can't pull it out like an annual grass. All these plants here have deep roots. This is carbon sequestration, and it smells good too. The funny thing is, we haven't even had to get into the nature reserve to see the benefits of nature. This is just where the cows haven't come to. Right, this is where the cows just accidentally haven't come to, and this could be restored across the seashore. We could have much more of this. What is the status of the elk reserve? Is, is it growing out of control without human and cattle intervention? No, you know, the, there's a lot of open grassland maintained by the Thule elk at the Tamales Elk Reserve. They graze just enough. They trample a little bit and horn a little bit of the coyote brush. And I think it's a nice balance of open grassland that's beginning to restore from its dairy ranching days. There's a lot more grass there. But it also has habitat for birds and brush rabbits and foxes with the coyote brush. I think that's the way the seashore should be. And we can have recreational trails through that. Complicating the topic further is when you find arguments from other academics who claim the opposite of what the academic standing in front of you is saying. It's so obviously where the cows are grazing. Are you able to find any native plants? No, this is all introduced weeds. I think this is like scarlet pimpernel. There's a pile of manure. These are annual grasses. Here's a poison hemlock coming up. Here's a milk thistle. This is from Europe. Yep, milk thistle from Europe. All right, so while we're standing in this field full of just invasive plants, 100% non-native plants, I want to talk about a blog post from a professor from a range department at an ag school who brought her ag students out here. It says that research has demonstrated that livestock ranching maintains extensive open spaces. But that's presumed to be a good thing from this perspective, but it's not necessarily a good thing. And am I wrong in saying that or am I right and why? I think it depends on is it an economic perspective to maintain large open patches of pasture? That's if you're trying to maximize your profits on dairy and beef. Yes, you want no shrubs. You want to mow the shrubs, get rid of the shrubs to maximize forage for cattle. But if you want an ecological conservation perspective, then you would want unfragmented habitats that are not weed fields. You, you would want a mosaic of shrubs grass, native trees, riparian, that would actually be um, a healthier ecosystem if this is a park. So this is basically promoting the reduction of biodiversity for the sake of monoculture that benefits a single group. I think so. It benefits the cattle. And this is a national seashore. It's a national park unit, yes. And yet we're promoting a reduction in biodiversity. Yes, absolutely. It also refers to it's protecting these open spaces from invasive brush. What invasive brush are they referring to? Well, they're referring to um, coyote brush, which is actually a native shrub that lives all over the California coast, and also the yellow bush lupin, which is native. And for the last several thousand years, coyote brush has been a native plant here for thousands of years, and its levels have fluctuated. Sometimes it's more common, sometimes it's less. But I think it shows there's always been a mosaic of open and brushy habitats. So calling it invasive is wrong. Or That's wrong. Subjective. Or is it just? It's completely wrong to say a native plant is invasive. If a native plant is present, then it's not an invasive plant. It's invading on land that humans made an effort to remove it. From. Right. So it's and, trying to come back to where it was. Or it's fluctuating in its boundaries, and we may need more study to understand why. If it gets more common, it has in the past, 
it might then get less common. And we're just taking a snapshot of what an economic um, situation is that wants to lessen that particular shrub. It's not edible to cows. When people come to Point Reyes National Seashore, they drive past the ranches to get to the remaining beautiful parts that there are of the seashore to enjoy their recreation. So the argument that the ranches are helping preserve the beauty or the recreational potential of this park is completely fictional. This is what we wanted to preserve. This is what nature lovers come here to experience. This is being presented as a problem by the people that want to destroy it for their industry. And the Park Service continues to side with that single industry against the interests of the wildlife, the native plants, and the public who want this restored to its native status.